Welcome back to Overthink, the Overwatch game show where I ask contestants hot takes and see where they stand. With the three circles representing the disagree stance, the neutral stance, and the agree stance. The lines in between representing the somewhat stances. If you didn't know, anybody could participate in this game show. I have open signups in my Discord server, so feel free to sign up there. Also, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I also host these live on Twitch, so go follow me there. And if you want to suggest any hot takes or themes for future episodes, please comment them down below as well. On today's episode I invited eight tank mains onto the show to find out what we've all been wondering. Do all tank players think the same? Let's find out. Being a tank one trick is more acceptable than being a DPS or support one trick. Go. I have three one trick accounts in top 500 on different characters in the tank role and I get like maybe one complaint a session, but I have some friends who are one tricks on support and I, I know they get complaints a lot more often than I do. I can see a tank one trick being a lot more accepted a lot of the time, mostly just due to the fact that, I mean, for one, you're kind of the largest person in the entire team. And if you, one, have the largest hitbox and two, are a one trick, you most likely know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing, there's a high likelihood that you can carry through an entire game and stuff like that, so. I, I'd like to play off a bit of what uh, what our Ramatra said. I think when you play tank, I'd imagine your team really looks to you as, you know, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna play this map? And so being a tank one trick, I, I feel like your team looks to you and it's it's accepting accepted to be a tank one trick because you're going in, you're pushing fights. My team's behind me. They're wanting to support me. They help me whenever I'm getting mauled by the enemy team. I, I just feel like when it comes to tank, supports are always getting yelled at. DPS, you know, DPS, diff, whatever. Tanks are just... They, I just don't feel like they have that problem. People are more accepting. So I think there are two reasons that I have the complete opposite uh, perspective on this. One is that I've actually always felt that uh, Overwatch players kind of see tank as the most volatile role when it comes to counterpicking. You'll see all the time like, oh, this we have a D.Va. What do you call it? There's a Zarya on the enemy team. It is so common to hear someone say, well, you got to switch. You just can't do that. And obviously, I don't think that's true but i think there's a big perception to that so i don't think it's as widely accepted and i do think that being the only role that has one person means that if there's a problem that means that there's one person who can swap to deal with it and since you're the only one who can do that there's more pressure on you to do that no one else on your team can switch to winston so that's kind on you that's my stance on that i can usually carry a game even if my teammates are bad go Carrying is like, um, you just carry the whole team by your actions, right? How you impact the game by your actions as a tank. And as a Winston player, killing the support can be big in a team fight. And if your teammates are like, at least doing something, you can win fights most of the time if your impact on the fight is huge, like picking off someone, denying a certain space, stuff like that. Overall, it's possible. Definitely possible if you can carry your team. I'm like somewhat disagree because you know, um, I mean, there are some points in time where I can carry, but you you know, like how some parts in your life can like impact your day and that'll like, uh, like that'll like affect your performance and everything. That kind of really happens to me a lot, so that's why I kind of like somewhat disagree with myself because I also have like really bad thing where I just it it doesn't really go too well for me. But there are some points where you know like I can be positive and you know I can like carry my team like, when they really need me and all that other stuff so my opinion is based on well being hawk and reinhardt if i do not have at least competent healers i am near useless but if i do i will literally kill entire teams by myself dps can be as bad as they want to be as long as my healers are fine if they're not you cannot do anything tank is the hardest role in the game go Tank is one of the hardest roles to play because, like, I mean, think of it this way, right? When you're a support, one of the main things you do is making sure the team stays alive. As a DPS, your main thing is just 
shoot deal tons of damage as a former DPS player, I know that. Tank, you have to create space to make sure you actually also deal enough damage to properly, you know, create space as well, say on like control point maps or whatever, you need to force people off the point. And sometimes you have to truly just use the strength that you as a tank have to push the enemy team away so you can actually win the game. I think tank is like the hardest because if you stop doing your job as a tank and the opposing tank does not stop doing their job, like they, they continue to do their job of uh, like creating space and taking space from you, it's very obvious and uh, you can't win games like at all. If you aren't playing tank correctly and the enemy tank does, uh, you just lose. But sometimes you luck out on the other roles, but it just never happens on tank. I honestly feel like playing tank itself is not that difficult like yeah you have some jobs you have to do but i really feel like compared to the other roles and especially for me like the jobs of a tank are a lot easier to do and i feel like the real difficulty on tank comes from trusting your team to actually enable you and follow up on what you're doing right i'll find myself creating space but then my entire team dies in the back line to like one genji and you know yeah i should like it's on me to try to peel for that but i just feel like a lot of the time the difficulty from tank comes from your team not following up or enabling you and not actually playing tank i just don't think tank is the hardest role to play i think this could totally depend on your rank but from my personal experience i felt support and maybe even sometimes dps were harder tank there's so much you can do and i feel like with your health and just being, you know, really tanky. You're not dying if you have a good team comp. Also, if you're not there, if I'm dead as a tank, my team can still win fights even if their tank is still there. Tank is not the win-all, be-all. You know, you don't need to have a tank, but tank is not a hard role to learn, nor is it uh, the hardest one to play. When I die, it is usually my support's fault, though. Rotog, I was actually making a mental note to see if you'd go to agree. I remember you said something like two questions ago that you're like, oh, if my supports don't heal me, it's GG. And I'm like, let's see if he goes to agree. And you did. All right. So you are a man of your word. So let's hear it. It's just a pat on the notice. If I do get enough heals, I will literally be 30 kills above the enemy tanks with twice their damage. So I'm just very confident if I get good heals. I can perform easily. If I do not, I die instantly because <laughs> I am very, very aggressive. I am in somewhat disagree because I think it's like, it takes two to tango. If I'm dying, then there is going to be blame on me and my supports for not being in in tandem. It, we're, we're not working together in the right way. Either uh, they're not reading that I'm going to push in or I'm not communicating it well enough or like there, there really are moments where they're just ignoring me or something, but I wouldn't say that that's the majority of the time. I, I would say that there sometimes it's my mistake, sometimes it's theirs. It really just depends. Being a tank, you have like responsibility of your actions because like I said, the impacts can be really big. If you keep blaming on supports of you dying, then like for me personally, kind of like a, a cope, like, you know, mechanism of coping is, is pretty much your fault. That's my take on it. Tank in Overwatch 1 was better than tank in Overwatch 2. Go. So I'm in somewhat agree because I do see a difference in the kind of vibe I get from matches as tank in Overwatch 2. And I big I think the biggest thing to me is I do feel a bit lonely when I do things like dives or I feel pressured. But I don't think it's as different as some people say it is, where like, I don't know, I, I am a lot tankier, which is nice, but I still do feel like sometimes I don't have as many of the defensive options I normally would, and I'm the only one who has this much HP. So it's a big pressure for me it's based on the fun factor of being tank because back in overwatch one it was all fun with like with your friend with you you're not lonely on the time you dive together you brawl together and here in overwatch 2 you feel like a leader you feel like something that you do does a big impact in the game i somewhat love overwatch one two tanks but at the same time i love overwatch 2 being the only you know the big guy i think that overwatch 2 tank is just it's more impactful feeling as an individual and that like buddy buddy thing that you had in Overwatch 1 was really from like a gameplay perspective all about negating uh, what the opponents were doing. And sometimes you were setting up the other tank, but you can still do that with DPS, so. 
I enjoyed goats. Go. Damn, we've never had so many people in neutral in all of Overthink history. Goats, to me, was my second favorite meta of all time. I understand why people didn't like it, but I really enjoyed... First of all, I really enjoyed several positions on goats, and I also really enjoyed the more strategic aspects to goats. Like maybe like there's a lot going on that people can't really see like from a spectator's perspective, but there's a ton of minute details going on within a goats v goats. And it can feel really exhilarating to like, just be always in the moment in that big fight in a goats match. It was just so fun. So goats is just like the best meta. I, I really loved goats because it was overwatch in like the most overwatch way. And what I mean by that is like, it had high skill expression high ult usage, high amounts of MOBA aspects that make Overwatch Overwatch and not just Valorant. I don't know, I was a tank and support player, so I didn't have the pain that some of the players did, but um, so I, I was enjoyed a good it a lot. Trick. <laughs> oh, unlucky. GG's. Yep. GG's. <laughs> Honestly, I should be in really agree because uh, <laughs> Goats was so fun. You come home after school, you get on your game, and you just play Goats with your six friends. That that is my Goats was awesome. <laughs> I'm so sad you can't do it anymore. Like what they were saying, it was so action packed. You were never stopping. The enemy team was upset, flaming you in chat. It was awesome. It was the most toxic and wonderful time that Overwatch has ever been. <laughs> the reason why I'm here is, well, one. I wasn't really around when GOATS was big, but also just from what I've heard from like other people who were around when GOATS was around, it's always had mixed reactions of like, you either hated it or you absolutely loved it. I can't really say I'm on either side of the spectrum because like I said, I was not around when GOATS was big, but upon hearing everything I've heard, I kind of wish I was because it actually sounds somewhat fun. I like the current Junker Queen meta. Go. I played Junker Queen a lot in the beta. I really enjoyed playing her then because of how strong she was then. As soon as my accounts merged and I had enough gold points, I impulse bought her gold gun. So I was really upset when she was nerfed and also because I'm kind of not that great with her yet. So her being buffed so much makes it so I can actually play her at a level where I can like get some value. And I just really enjoy it because I love her play style. Her being strong makes it really fun for me. <laughs> um, at least in my time of playing tank and just in general playing Overwatch 2 and stuff since Junker Queen was like buffed, even before she was buffed, I always wanted to try playing her, but everything seemed to outshine her so it kind of turned me away from playing her and that's why i mainly turned to ramatra um but then she got absolutely like buffed into the sky and i would honestly say this is some of the most fun i have ever had playing overwatch apart from a majority of like how like they handle some of the events like star watch battle of olympus whatever um i think this is honestly some of the most fun i've ever had playing this game because of just how fun junker queen is and yeah sure fighting against her can be a bit annoying because like oh she's almost dead and then she healed all of her health but honestly i don't care because it's fun fighting her fighting with her and playing as her I can't pretend to be too familiar with it because I actually haven't played on my main since the patch. Part of that was for a few other reasons like traveling and stuff, but I did see the patch notes and I said, that looks dangerous. I don't want to play during that until I know what's actually going to be happening. I'm not big on Junker Queen and also that seemed like very big buffs. So scary stuff, not my thing. I tend to avoid metas that don't favor my heroes and Junker Queen is not really fun to fight as hard Hog as well. <laughs> really annoying because she just out heals you and out damages you. She's like Hog, but better. Also, little hot take. I believe the Jungle Queen was more fun before the buffs. It's more satisfying because right now it's just so easy, but before you could carry and feel like you're a god. Now you just feel like you're just another one. Alrighty. If anybody would like to change their stance, you could go ahead and do so now. Hey, Zarya. And Diva. Okay, so uh, why did you guys change the stance? So I changed my stance because uh, after further. Uh, contemplation. I recognize that although I like playing Zarya, which 
Zarya is good into Queen, and I love Queen myself. It's probably not healthy for the game overall to have a character that can be good across every SR range. <laughs> so, yeah. As a D.Va player, I love fighting Junker Queens. I'm so aggressive. I am way too aggressive on D.Va. When I'm not playing D.Va, I, I can't stand Junker Queen. I heard new meta. She's so strong. I agree a lot more with the disagree side that maybe I should have moved all the way over here, but I'll stay right here. Her old one, she felt balanced, but also, you know, really rewarding. I agree that, you know, old Junker Queen was better. Now we have one last question. This is the most controversial question of the entire night. I expect a lot of you guys to get canceled, a lot of you guys to argue. It's gonna get really intense. Are you guys prepared for this? Roadhog is sexy. Go. <laughs> All right. And with that, we're going to call it a day. Thank you guys for coming to Overthink to watch. Um, for some reason, people in the comment section say that they like watching. Oh, Vermacher is running away. Okay. They like watching you guys pop your ults at the same time. So if you all want to go ahead and uh, pop your ults, the YouTube comment section loves it for some reason. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you all get canceled for your shit road dog opinions. Two, to the one, to the one, to the three. I play in the mode and I play to win. I love to die and I like to be RB. All systems checked out. Group up with me. Two, to the one, to the one, to the three. I'm here to party. <laughs> GG. A giant gorilla. You can keep up with me. You can't be serious. 